Hello and welcome to another video on 6th edition Tyranids and tactics and my general opinions on them, which is good. That puts me in the majority. I know most people just uh, laughing at me saying, yeah, I really like the Tyranids, but I, I do. Uh, this is going to be a video which is going to serve two purposes. First, it's going to cover the HQ choice of the Tyranid Prime, and second, it's going to answer a challenge, which is, what possible use could I find for a Tyranid Prime? Uh, and the second one is, is a really valid question because it actually took some thinking. Once again, uh, this is challenging the hypothesis that I have that there are no useless units. I believe all of these units were very well thought out and play tested by the Smegheads at GW. Uh, and they all uh, should be able to fit somehow in the army in a useful way. Okay, so to get down to it, Tyranid Prime. First I had to find out what's really different between a Tyranid Prime and all the other HQ choices. And that is where I found the answer. The number one big difference, uh, which makes the Tyranid Prime unique from everybody else in the Tyranid Army, is it's the only independent character in the Tyranid Army. That's very cool. It's also not a monstrous creature, which means it can use Turvagon tunnels. Okay, and it can take bio artifacts. Now, that alone started making me think in all types of evil and creative ways. Uh, of, the first thought is, is that you can attach it to Shrikes, which is flying warriors, or you can attach it to normal warriors. Uh, an alpha leader then allows shrikes or normal warriors to use the Tyranid Prime's weapon skill and ballistic skill instead of their own, which basically kicks them up to 6-4, which means you can have a unit of ten warrior of uh, 9 warriors plus the Tyranid Prime. That alone is going to give you 39 strength 4 shots. Uh, and a lot of very interesting situations with lookout sir roles. If you give the Tyranid Prime wings, you now got a flying 10 unit, 6-4. Uh, I think that's awesome. Uh, the, the other thing that I think really comes into shine with it is the bio artifacts, specifically that uh, Obliteratrix one which is a bone sword lash whip combo uh, two plus poison rending and uh, what is the other one oh yeah it gives a plus three to initiative wow and it has instant death on a six so you're talking about this is going to be an instant death weapon which wounds on a two plus Reroll all fails, which is a one. Um, all failed wounds, which is a one. Uh, it gives plus one to strength, so that means the Tyranid Prime is now strength six, so that also brings in insta kill against all the toughness three units out there. You don't even have to worry about the six. Uh, and it's a, it's a, it wounds, like I said, on a two plus, no matter what, with a reroll of ones. Wow. I mean, that's just, that's just wow for me, anyway. And the fact now that this is an instant character, and uh, people might want to correct me on this, but as far as I understand, that means it can pretty much join any uh, Tyranid brood, standard Tyranid brood out there. I, I guess you could have it join a squad of 30 Hermagons and have him walk up behind them or with them. Um, he could join a brood of Venomthropes. He could join a brood of Zoanthropes. And, uh, wow, if he joins Venomthropes, then now he has Shroud and uh, two-plus cover saves. Um, the possibilities with this are, are vast. So you could imagine him popping out of a tunnel, or if you take a Swarm Lord or a Hive Tyrant, and uh, with Hive Commander give him outflank, he could walk in on the side of the table, 
attached to a unit. I see. I see a lot of possibilities for him with being the only independent character in the Tyranid army, able to take all their biomorphs and all of their all of their bio artifacts, especially that one, the the Obliteratrix. Uh, oh, and of course the Miasma Cannon. Let's not forget that one. Another bio artifact. Uh, two plus poison, thirty six inch range attack, blast. Yes, it's a poison blast at 36 inch range, with a weapon with, with ballistic skill four. I guess he would have. Wow. Oh, and it also has the second option of being fired as a template weapon. So that gives you a wall of death roll and uh, and Overwatch. Uh, that's 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 incredibly nasty. Um, I think there's a lot of possibility for using him. As, as an HQ. It's going to depend upon the creativity of the person and their Tyranid army, but he is definitely not someone I would categorize as non-competitive and no use in an army. Um, the other good things that I see with him is that he will also have extended synapse range. He'll also come with of course, the shadow in the warp. So some possibilities there. You could imagine him joining a Carnifex unit and imagine going up against Grey Knights or, say, Eldar and their Seers or any other demons or anything that's psychic. Suddenly now they're going to be minus three to their leadership in a Carnifex unit or another unit that causes fear. It's going to make it very difficult to charge that unit. Yeah, basically, there's a lot of possibility there. As I've said in, in my prior videos, the, the Tyranids are all about adaptation. They are the most adaptive army that I can see. Some people say, hey, the Space Marine Codex gives you a lot of choices. Yes, I would say in a way they do. But in terms of the ability to adapt your army on the fly in the middle of a game, um... I think the Tyranids do that or will do that better than anybody else. Uh, this also includes, I don't know if they can join the other ones, but like Harpies. You can imagine if he's, uh, not Harpies, I mean Gargoyles. And they have their blind attack. So you can imagine him a winged Tyranid Prime in a group of 30 Gargoyles with their blind attack hitting and then he goes in the hand-to-hand. -hand. Uh, the list just goes on. Uh, needless to say, I don't think he's useless. And anybody out there who's going to try to say, yeah, it's just one of those broken units, those broken units that has no use, you'll never see them used, you never see them walking around, I would disagree. I think this is more about um, using the Tyranids in a different way than the standard... Um, make waves and waves of Tyranids to walk across the table. I can think of lots of uses for uh, for the Tyranid Prime as a shooty if you start putting them in fortifications, if you put him behind the Aegis Wall, if you put him on the, uh, the landing platform, especially with all of these huge wounds, uh, gr groups of wounds that you can get. There's definitely a lot of uses. Um, I really don't find that much at fault with the Tyranid Codex, and I hope you find these ideas uh, useful, and maybe we'll see more of them, more Tyranids, and more strategies for the Tyranids army than just zerging forward in the game. I hope you enjoy the video, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.